TheMesh.TV, an online network of original free audio and video shows based out of Western North Carolina, reaching the entire world. Listen and watch through iTunes or through the website TheMesh.TV. Hey everybody, welcome to the realtailgate.com college football hangout. This is a Google Hangout sponsored by Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue. I'm your host Big J Waldo. I'm the new fool in town. And Ben Swain is our producer and his sound is laid down by the underground. Uh, Talking Moose has our uh, Talking Moose Media has our technical stuff working tonight. You can join us every Wednesday live at 9:30 p.m. as Ben myself and a rotating set of panelists discuss college football in North Carolina. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue, and they want me to remind you, it's just not a tailgate without the barbecue. Log on to realtailgate.com for special offers, a list of locations, archived editions of this hangout, and please take the time to download and listen to the realtailgate.com college football podcast. This week on our show, in addition to the very smooth, very suave Ben Swain. We have Brian Barber from Tar Heel Blog. Hello, Brian. Hello. We have Diana. I should have asked how to pronounce it. I know. That. You should have. Kunovac? Should. I'm going to let you try it. Kunovac? Okay, Kunovac. You were close. Kunovac, close. all right, sorry. I went a little Eastern, I guess. <laughs> um, and Diana's from Inside Carolina. We have James Curl again. From RiddickandReynolds.com. Thank you. How you doing, James? Good. Broadcasting uh, in front of our new uh, volunteer fire department, uh, fire tower. You know, to spot forest fires and whatnot. Uh, it's a little crooked. It was built by a Duke engineer, so it doesn't quite stand up the way it should. But uh, you know, <laughs> we'll make it do with what we can. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, we also have Matt Purdy from SCACCHoops.com. I think that's the first time I've ever said that correctly, Matt. I think so, too. And I'm broadcasting live from my kitchen, which is not as fancy as Willow Springs, apparently. So, <laughs> Are you cooking right now? Am I what? Are you cooking? No, I'm just it's the best place to set up. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> uh, also, and uh, not least, of course, we have Sean Crest from Bottom of the Pile podcast. How are you, Mr. Crest? All right, it's actually pronounced Tony Kukoc, but that's okay. Okay. <laughs> Steal my foreign thunder? Come on. I was wondering if the K was silent. Um, <laughs> how, I guess everybody's doing good. Ben, how'd you like the new intro? Oh, I loved it, man. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of uh, you know of Digital Underground and the whole. Uh, you know that that whole scene of of Oakland Bay Area rap. It's kind of my forte, so I'm all for it. Fantastic. Um, I know you're in charge. Um, let's move right into our topics. Um, big weekend this weekend. Thankfully, finally, football is about to start back up. College football. Here we come. Um, the ACC is kicking off this season with a slate of very high profile. Uh, my notes say conference games, but I guess these are non-conference games. Um, uh, the big ones we're going to talk about are UNC versus South Carolina. I guess this is the battle of the Carolinas. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> we have Syracuse versus Penn State, and uh, it took me almost three days to figure out that one of those teams is actually an ACC team. Uh, Alabama versus Virginia Benchway. Tech. And Georgia versus Clemson. Go um, <laughs> Of course. That, that was weird. <laughs> I would like to ask, what do you guys think as far as what it would mean for the ACC to come away with wins in these games? And I guess, is it possible? <clears throat> Sean, I'll can we start off. with you? I'll kick it off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sean, get, Sean, you go, man. Come on. Yeah, let's start with Sean. I want to hear from Sean. All right. Well, the good news is that this should make it easier. Starting off with games like this should make it easier for ACC fans in the area to do their planning this fall. 
uh, because ESPN usually has to hold back games that may be of national interest. And after this weekend, if the games go the way that I think they will, uh, they'll be able to announce their game times on Monday. They'll say that the ACC network can pick whatever game they want for 12.30 and everyone else is going to be on it at, at 3.30 on ESPN3. They're not going to want to hold anything back. I think it's going to be uh, November 24th was kind of Armageddon last year, and I think we're starting off with uh, with November 24th this season. Fair enough. Anybody else? Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's funny. I, if if the ACC gets wins out of any of those games, I'm not necessarily sure that it's going to matter that much because I think the uh, the ACC narrative is so well protected in the media that uh, that there will be a reason why the ACC won those games. That's something different than Clemson played great or uh, you know Virginia Tech shocked the world. It'll be that the SEC team wasn't interested, like we saw last year in the Sugar Bowl. <laughs> Um, it's just it's just such a well protected narrative. I'm not sure what the ACC can actually do to gain ground in that area. Well, I mean, Carolina kills J- Giovanni and Clowney. I mean, that that'd be some points, right? It's like literally kill him. Yeah, literally kill him, <laughs> right? Bryn Renner and his like gang are out tonight. <laughs> well, the, narr- the narrative would then shift to the where the conference that killed a guy. And I don't know that we necessarily <laughs> yeah, want that. Go. Either. This is going to be an oh, Aaron Hernandez good. conversation. Is that where we're going? Is that something? <laughs> the that SEC wins win there too. <laughs> Pretty sure that happened in the last Boy Scout, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, nobody's going to win any of those games. It's going to be a really long weekend for the ACC, and it's kind of sad. Um, you know, Syracuse might beat Penn State just because I don't know how good Penn State's going to be. Um, but and the, I, I, I can't see anybody else winning. Oh, come Penn on, I thought, y'all, I thought y'all would have some confidence in uh, in North Carolina because I don't have any. <laughs> not, not in your defense. No, no, no. <laughs> Definitely not in the defense. I think we're kind of surprised. She's going to hope Renner throws six touchdown passes or something. That's the only way they're going to have have a chance in that game. Are you guys feeling the emotional investment by Florida State fans that Georgia beats Clemson this weekend? Are you, are you guys seeing any of that? They're secretly hoping for it. I don't even think it's secret. I mean, I, I think <laughs> I think that Clemson being the perceived breadwinner of the ACC this year is really yeah. threatening Florida State. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So nobody thinks. Nobody That's a good point, Matt. Thanks for. <laughs> <laughs> Ask more open-ended questions, Ben. God. It wasn't a question. It was a statement. <laughs> Embrace the debate. Come on. <laughs> Matt, who do you like in these games? I think, honestly, I really think the old, there's two games that I think ACC has a decent chance of winning, and that would be Clemson over Georgia and Syracuse over Penn State. Um, Penn State actually will have more, more – most likely they'll have a freshman quarterback starting. I mean, yeah, he's, you know, one of the top two quarterbacks coming out, but – that's still kind of a big environment, you know, opening day. And Syracuse, I don't think they're going to be as, like, god-awful as people think they're going to be. They, you know, they have two good running backs coming back. Um, and, they, you know, they have a decent amount of returning starters. Um, so I, I think that's probably the best bet, honestly. And Clemson, you know, it all just depends on if they score 70 points or they have a defensive performance like they did against West Virginia. So, But they could win that. But I think Georgia will win. And I think if Syracuse wins, I think that might actually be bad for the ACC to have the only team that wins a high-profile showdown be the one that hasn't played a conference game yet. I don't necessarily <laughs> think that's good news. All right. Well, the topic was short-lived. <laughs> We're going to milk it a little more. <laughs> the tailgate special from Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue. It's eight pieces of chicken, a pint of barbecue, any two sides, two dozen hush puppies, and a whole gallon of tea. Just go to realtailgate.com for details, coupons, and a list of locations that open early on game day. Uh, we want to drill down on uh, Carolina versus the Carolina. Um, <laughs> who will ACC fans be cheering for? I'm not really quite sure why. Is there a reason that we're thinking they'll go against UNC? Is there like a hate club that I'm not aware of? I just, I feel like there's, yes. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of conference pride, or at least when it comes to the SEC, I feel like a lot of other conferences feel really good about beating the SEC. 
I'm a Georgia grad, in case you couldn't tell by the go dogs at the beginning. And when Alabama played Notre Dame in the national championship last year, I hated Alabama for what they did to Georgia in the SEC championship, but I wanted Notre Dame crushed. So I don't know. Maybe the conference pride is just an SEC thing, but I feel like fans would cheer for UNC in that game. Well, I'm kind of curious. I wonder what I like. Where will Clemson fans come down to this? Do they? <laughs> I, mean, I, cause, I mean, Clemson fans, I think there's sort of some animosity with, with uh, North Carolina, but Man, they hate South Carolina. Yeah. They probably and and honestly, they probably take the attitude that hey, if they can hold over, hey, you, you lost to North Carolina football. Look at you guys. So that that there's probably some of that going on with them. I think North Carolina is probably the least rootable uh, squad from the ACC, um, and and that's not just my uh, my rose colored glasses. I think uh, speaking to that point, I. Uh, you know, we had some uh, Wake Forest fans weigh in on a question I put out on Twitter this week. Um, you know, would you rather see Carolina win or it be a good game or Carolina get stomped? And uh, not just state fans weighed in to have Carolina get stomped. So I, I don't know if it's just, you know, the immense amount of basketball success and perceived, um, you know, notion of uh, Carolina as the protected school of John Swafford uh, insert your conspiracy theory here, um, but uh, I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is Carolina the of the ACC schools? Is it the one that is least uh, rootable for? I think so. I, I think rooting for Carolina is a little like rooting for a Rod at this point. Uh, after the after the Butch Davis scandal, um, even the PJ Hairston scandal now, um, and then while they're going through all that to declare themselves champions while they're serving a bowl ban. Um, I think it's a little bit arrogant, and I think that's how it comes off to the rest of the conference. So I think they, they plus they they want to see Jadavon Clowney hurt someone. So I think, I think everyone wants cool. to see Jadavion Clowney hurt someone. It's just fun. It's good TV. <laughs> <laughs> so I, mean, I, I, I don't know if it's that you guys just aren't being honest about it, or that or that you don't you don't see it. But the the thing about the ACC and, and Deanna touched on this a little bit the difference the fundamental difference between SEC fans and ACC fans. No one hates like ACC fans do, right? Like ACC fans don't want to see anyone succeed, and it's it's not a matter of like, you know, cheering for South Carolina or for Georgia this weekend. It's that, you know, we love when Clemson pulls a Clemson. You know, we love when Carolina gets embarrassed. We love when bad things happen to our teams. It's just a weird thing about the ACC, and I don't I don't know where that comes from. But um, it, you know, there there is zero conference pride in the ACC because we love. I mean, maybe it's our sense of humor. Maybe that we're the we're the funniest conference, so we like to uh, <laughs> we like to make jokes and laugh at ourselves. I, I think, think because I'm so far removed from the whole like being a fan of the ACC thing, I just don't really notice it, or I never really paid attention to the aspect of it because. Coming from the SEC, like if an SEC school goes up against someone, like going up against Oregon or Notre Dame or anybody, like. We want, we want to win. The SEC is number one. Because I'll even tell you, the whole, as a Georgia fan, we haven't won a national championship, but I'm proud that the SEC, when LSU won that national championship, it was like, I won that national championship. Well, you always hear in the games where, you know, the SEC faces off with either the ACC or any opponent uh, in a premier non-conference game, when the a SEC opponent inevitably wins, you know, the chans chant SEC, SEC. Yeah. Uh, whenever uh, ACC fans chant ACC, it's usually in a "Hey, you got beat by an ACC school" <laughs> in your face. Um, how does that taste? You know, it's it's not a uh, sense of pride. It's more of a you know you should be shamed. That's true. At the at the Carolina Maryland basketball game, it was Maryland's last game as the ACC. Oh, yeah. made the that is very true. <laughs> So I, I don't know. I think it's this pit of mediocrity that we all sit in, and we are afraid that someone might actually climb out of it, and so we want to grab them and pull them <laughs> back down into our pit of suck so that we all are on the same plane. Well, yeah, I mean, is, is it a parody thing? I mean, is it a thing where we're all sort of on the same level, so we, you know, we, we go at each other and... and, and and we don't we feel threatened by each other more than SEC you have I guess it's more I guess it's uh it's more top heavy in the SEC you have a few schools that are really good and then you know Alabama people they you know they'll pull from Mississippi State because they know Mississippi State will never be a real threat to them. When I got I got Alabama fan friends that wouldn't pull for Tennessee if you paid them. Because they're Alabama fans. Yeah, sure. 
they have their own success. They don't have to live vicariously like Deanna and the rest of the Georgia fans. It's true. <laughs> oh. It hurts, but it's true. Right, right there, like a bullet, but a true bullet. A true I, bullet. That's what I do. I shoot truth bullets. <laughs> from Oakland. Straight from Oakland. Uh, back, back to the Carolina thing. I think, um, growing, I mean, growing up, you know, being going to high school, college in North Carolina, I think I've noticed that people either love or hate UNC and Duke, actually. And I think I think that's kind of what leads into the idea of maybe the rest of the ACC not rooting for Carolina. Plus, I mean, it's the whole public Ivy thing. Um, you know, them in Virginia are kind of in that boat where they kind of see themselves in that light. At least that's the way I look at it. Obviously, I'm, I have the same color glasses on James does, but looking at it objectively, that's that's what I'm thinking. That, yeah, I, that's very well said. Anybody but Carolina in my book. But. <laughs> Which Carolina are you talking about, though? We see how it is. <laughs> I'm not talking we about see how it is. Carolina. <laughs> I'll root for the Carolina. You know what, though? Like, let's let's ask this question. If if UNC wins that game against South Carolina, you know, Clemson beats Georgia, uh, Virginia Tech shocks the world somehow, <laughs> are, are people going to backpedal and kind of uh, have that, like, uh, that hindsight – SEC chant where they're where they're feeling that conference pride that uh, you know we 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 pulled off the shocker until the NC games. State loses to Louisiana Tech and then it'll go right out the window. <laughs> I tell you, under the same circumstances that that scenario comes about, Ben, I'm sure that everything I touch will turn to solid gold. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, let's, uh, in this hypothetical world, let's say that the UNC does beat South Carolina and then you know uh, Virginia Tech does beat Alabama. Then I think going into that Clemson-Georgia game, I think you will have uh, Clemson fans legitimately beating their chest if they knock off Georgia. Because at that point, you know, you'd have your, your sweep of the SEC. Uh, and at that point, it wouldn't be an ironic ACC chant. It would be, you know, a legit, you know, we showed up today and got the job done. Uh, I don't know if you know if UNC gets stomped and Virginia Tech gets stomped. If Clemson you know pulls out a two point win, if they're going to suddenly start chanting ACC from the tops of rafters, they might. But I, I don't think that it would have the same volume as it would if if they completed the sweep. I have to tell you, given that you know we're a show focusing on mostly ACC football in North Carolina. Uh, I gotta think that, or I gotta worry that maybe we're alienating some fans with the way that we're talking about them. No, they're used to it by now. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I know like, after Clemson beat LSU, I know I, I was really proud, right? I mean, I, I went out that night and celebrated like it was New Year's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> so you were home by ten. <laughs> well, it actually was New Year's Eve. That was that was the joke there, Jay. I tell you, what, oh. the great, the great, the great, <laughs> the great travesty if um if if ACC pulls off these upsets here is that uh, you have a lot of national rivals with a bunch of rehashed jokes they can't use. Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, Twitter will be silent on on Monday. Um, but you know, it, it'll, it'll just set up ultimately for the for the jokes later on in the season when we start picking each other off. Yeah. All right. Are we anybody got any more on this? Nope. James, your face looks like looks pregnant with information. <laughs> <laughs> Am I glowing? <laughs> you are. <laughs> Strangely, eerily. We need to penetrate that mind of yours. I was gonna use there we go. <laughs> Ben Swain wins. <laughs> ben Swain wins. Oh, and I don't have the effect pulled up. Sorry. <laughs> what was right. the effect? I forgot. Move, move us along, Jay. Ta da! Yes. Okay. All right, we're going on to the next topic. It's really not a different topic. I think there was one thing on Ben Swain's mind when he wrote these down. Um, Deanna Kunabek has guessed. has, in Ben's estimation, by far the toughest non-conference schedule of any major conference. Is that, is that scheduling strategy good for the league, or is it a bad thing? Deanna, what do you think? 
<laughs> I was going to say, I kind of think this depends on if you win those games, doesn't it? <laughs> if you lose, you're, you you're going to say no. If you win, you're going to say yeah. <laughs> What's the... I guess, because, you know, they take account into account for bowl games, you know, the toughness of schedule and that kind of thing. So, in a way, it helps, but if you lose the games, it hurts. So, I guess you could also say it helps for bringing fans because they want to see them go up against better opponents, but that's about all I got. Well, the, the, there's a big difference between football and basketball. And, and in football, if you lose one game, your national title hopes are pretty much shot. Yeah, that's um, true. In, in basketball, you know, you'll see a lot of coaches that schedule heavy up front in the non-conference because they want their team to get better and be ready for conference play. But you don't have that luxury in football. So I think um, in one sense, and I know John Bunting, uh, using a Carolina example, was you know, noted for scheduling very heavy in the non-conference. He, he loved to schedule you know, really strong opponents. And all I ended up doing was, uh, you know, getting, you know, him uh, three and one, or excuse me, one and three in the non-conference schedule, and then missing out on bowl games. And losing 69-14 to Louisville. <laughs> right. So I mean, you know, it, it in that situation, it, it didn't help out. It didn't make his team a better team that was able to perform better during the conference slate. Uh, it just simply, you know, kept them out of bowl games. So I, I think you have to look at football and basketball differently when it comes to scheduling. Mm -hmm. But the ACC is not going to lift their national reputation by beating Savannah State. They, they need to schedule these games. I mean, obviously they need to win them, but the only reason we're talking about the three teams we're talking about this week is that they're playing tough games. We're not mentioning NC State. We're not mentioning Duke because they're playing kind of the classic ACC opening week opponents. I mean, th this is what they need to do if they want to improve their standing nationally. But, again, if they win those games, if they keep scheduling those and then losing, it kind of just... <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit of just, just, just the annual reminder that the ACC is mediocre. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah and, and unfortunately, you don't get bonus points if you schedule a team that's kind of good but not doesn't have a brand name. You know, like you don't like you if you schedule a team who was a bowl opponent last season, but they're from the MAC or whatever. You know, nobody really cares if you beat you know Ohio, Miami of Ohio, uh, even though they might be a very good team, uh, might have tons of seniors and a great quarterback. But, you know, it's kind of a high-risk, low-reward situation. You lose that game, you lose to Miami, Ohio. If you win that game, well, you know, you beat a MAC opponent, which you should have done anyway because you're one of the big six conferences. Are you, so, are you, you don't get points for going up against Maction and winning? Uh, if you can outscore Maction, I guess that earns you some bonus points. But uh, I don't know. Uh, you know what I'm saying, though. It's it's you know it's it's kind of tough. If you want to make a name for yourself, you you have to shoot really high to knock off some you know one of the big six, and not just any of the big six. I mean, you got you got to pull from preferably preferably the SEC, uh, maybe the Big Ten, um, you know, Big Twelve. You got to get some names on your schedule and then beat those guys in order to try to truly start making a dent in that perception. I don't know. I, I think Ben might be right. I think the, the train on our perception may be too far down the track for it to really be completely turned back. I think you've got to be smart about what, what teams play these high-profile games. Um, I, I think it's great for Clemson to play Georgia. Um, you know, I think it's great for Florida State to get out there and play big games. Even Virginia Tech playing Alabama, even though Alabama is otherworldly good right now. But you know, you look at Virginia's schedule. They've got some. They, you know, they open up with BYU, and they've got some tough, tough games down, down later on in the season. They're just going to get destroyed. Um, we've seen Wake do it. We've seen Duke play Alabama. We played, last year Duke played Stanford, and those games are are, are embarrassing to watch. Um, but if you've got your best teams playing high profile games, that they've got an actual shot to win. I think that's maybe how you chip away at that perception. Um, mm -hmm. But. What concerns me about these uh, early season marquee games is are you limiting your opportunity to play in those bigger bowls later on in the season, and that's where you're really going to get your gains in terms of, of a perception. But if you know if you've got if you've got Clemson playing you know in, in the Sun Bowl, that it's just that's not going to help us out at all. You know Clemson's got to get in those big you know that at large bid and, and win that game. Um, I think that's what we need to do, and, and and maybe the way to do that is to game the system a little bit and play weaker teams. Just a thought. But well, Florida State tried that last year. I mean, they didn't play anybody, and they ended up playing uh, a coachless Northern Illinois team in the in the Orange Bowl that you know didn't really help the ACC at all to win that game. 
Oh, they got the monkey off their back, though, right? I guess. <laughs> Yeah, no, Ben's right. I mean, we need to start regularly getting multiple teams to, you know, BCS games, uh, and it needs to be teams that can close the deal. I don't know what our record is in BCS games at this point, but it's not good. Uh, it was really bad up until, uh, I think, Virginia Tech won an Orange Bowl recently. Uh, so, I mean, it, it you know, our, our BCS record's bad, uh, and we're not getting, you know, multiple teams to those to that level. And yeah, unfortunately, you know, if you're playing solid teams trying to build your perception on the front end, you oftentimes, even if it's a really good squad, you can wind up, you know, nine and three, uh, maybe even ten and two, but on the outside looking in of that at-large bid. I think you have to play one good team. I, I like the idea of maybe scheduling one, you know, marquee game. Um, I don't really like playing FCS schools, but you know, having the other three maybe be like a UCF and ECU. Uh, or at least a Sun Belt team. You know, give yourself try to at least go three and one in non conference and hope you knock off a Tennessee or a Florida or whoever. I think that's the best way because you know you play a Florida and then you get matched up with you know Wisconsin or whoever in the in the postseason. You got to be prepared for it. So I, I think that's probably the best way in my mind to do it. You still get your wins. You still beat teams that actually count towards bowl eligibility, and you take a shot at trying to knock off a big team. And if you play respectably, you know you're not as much of a joke. I agree. I think having one big game like that, especially like you said, would help in the postseason because if it, if you do get to a bowl game and you've just been playing these, you know, Sun Belt or MAC teams, what are you going to expect? You don't know what to expect in this bowl game or this postseason game. Yeah. And the ACC doesn't, I mean, outside of Clemson, Florida State, and maybe Virginia Tech doesn't really have the top end talent. So, and you need to play a different style, like, you know, SEC speed, however you want to say it. But, um, and that's what yeah, happened. Then, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you, you just got to be prepared and take your shot at it, but still kind of give yourself that cushion of a couple wins. I agree. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to. I don't want to skip to our our uh, roundup too quick. Uh, I'm going to go around the horn here, so to speak, and and ask each of you to pick an ACC lock for the weekend. Oh, boy. Sean, give me one ACC team that is sure to win. Well, when I say ACC team, we focus on the four ACC teams in North Carolina and East Carolina. So of those five teams, give me a lock. Well, I think Duke is the biggest lock. Should I be shocked? <laughs> <laughs> the Battle of Durham. They're, they're going to win the Battle of Durham against NC Central. Coach. With, a, with an interim coach. Yeah. <laughs> coach Cutcliffe was talking about their speed. He was glad they were going to be tested against a fast team like NC Central. That's Aren't we be, all? That's got to be the toughest job talking up NC Central yeah. right after they fire a coach. He did it with Flat Florida International, so. Yeah, but yeah, but Cutcliffe can do it. He can talk up anybody. Yeah. They I'm got this one kid. I'm going to shock the world, guys, and I'm going to give my lock of the week the battle of North Carolina versus South Carolina. Uh, Wake Forest will beat Presbyterian. <laughs> uh, and I also just want to throw out uh, the, the, the Blue Hose. Fan? I, just want, I just want to throw out the Blue Hose. So that's yeah. – yes. Wake's going to win that game. Well, Wake throw any fans out – Presbyterian fans out of the game, though. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Dion? Matt, who's your uh, I, I was gonna, I was gonna say Wake, but I didn't have as uh, cool of an introduction as Ben did to that one. So uh, <laughs> yeah, um, but I, I mean, that. So yours is Wake. Yes. Excellent, Brian. Uh, I'll say Duke. I mean, that's that's. I mean, that's got to be a lock for them. Plus, that's they don't have a lot of margin of error. They got to win every game that is eminently winnable for them. So that's you know. That'll be the first one. Gotcha. Jimmy C. Um, I'll go Wake Forest on this one. I, I don't know why, but uh, the Battle of Durham scares me. Uh, there's, there's, there's too much pride on the line. Uh, I, think, uh, I think Wake Forest is looking to make a statement and come out strong, baby. Are they closing the checkpoints for the Battle of Durham? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I the tiebreaker here? Is this... uh, no. So far, three wakes, two Dukes. Ooh. I'm going to tie it up. I'm going to go with Duke. 
I really feel like Duke can penetrate that NC Central team. I really do. I just feel like, you know, they have the interim head coach. It's just, yeah, I agree. I'm going to go with Ben. Ben. If Central wins, they will leave impregnated with pride. Yes, this is true. (laughs) All right, well, uh, I'm going to give my lock to NC State. Just lay my cards on the table. Oh, not uh, East over Old Dominion. It shows up in the back, the defensive backfield for Louisiana Tech. So, it's a tie. We'll see what happens. Oh. Our reputations are on the line. Now. Yeah. Yes. I'm nervous. Yeah. All right. That's going to do it for us. Um, thanks again, everybody. Really appreciate your time. Thanks very much to Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue. Again, reminding you, it's just not a tailgate without the barbecue. Make sure you check out the realtailgate.com college football podcast available at realtailgate.com, themesh.tv, or on iTunes. I'm your host, Jay Waldo. Over there, from my perspective, is Ben Swain, our producer. We'll see you next week. The tailgate special from Smithfield's Chicken and Barbecue. It's eight pieces of chicken, a pint of barbecue, any two sides, two dozen hush puppies, and a whole gallon of tea. Just go to realtailgate.com for details, coupons, and a list of locations that open early on game day. TheMesh.tv online network of original free audio and video shows based out of Western North Carolina, reaching the entire world. Listen and watch through iTunes or through the website, themesh.tv.